In this video we're going to be looking at alkanes and alkenes. Both alkanes and alkenes are hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are compounds made of only two elements. If you're not certain which two elements those are, there's a subtle clue on this slide. The component elements of hydrocarbons decide their structure. Carbon prefers to make four bonds, whereas hydrogen can only make the one. Now, on to alkanes. Alkanes are saturated carbon chains. By saturated, we mean compounds that only contain single bonds. Each carbon is single bonded to its neighbours in one long chain, and any remaining bonds are taken up by hydrogen atoms. They all follow a naming convention, which means that they are named after the number of carbons present in the molecule. And finally, they always end in ane. For the exam, you are expected to be able to provide the names, chemical formulas, and structured formulas for the first four of the alkanes. The first alkane, the simplest, is methane with the chemical formula of CH4, one carbon surrounded by four hydrogens all single bonded to it. The next is ethane with C2H6. Next there is propane at C3H8 and finally butane with C4H10. Alkanes themselves are relatively unreactive other than combustion. They burn very easily with oxygen. As the alkane chains get longer, their boiling point increases and their viscosity also increases. The viscosity of a substance describes how runny it is. Substances with a low viscosity are very runny, such as water, whereas substances with a high viscosity are not very runny, such as golden syrup. The chemical equations of alkanes follow a very specific formula. The number of carbons, in this case N, has to be bonded to a certain number of hydrogens, in this case 2N plus 2. For instance, if you had 8 carbons, you would need 2 times 8 plus 2 hydrogens, or 18. So that would give you the formula C8H18 and would be octane. Before talking about alkanes, we did mention that carbon could make four bonds. This does not necessarily need to be four single bonds. We could have a double bond, as shown in the diagram below. Hydrogen, however, can only make the one bond. Alkenes are said to be unsaturated carbon chains because they contain one of these carbon-carbon double bonds. They follow the same naming convention as the alkanes, but in this case they always end in ene. In the case of all the alkenes that you will find in your exam, they will only contain one double bond. In the case of the alkenes, you are only expected to know the names, chemical formulas and displayed formulas of the first three alkenes. There's no such thing as methene because it's not possible to double bond a carbon to itself. So the first of our actual alkenes is ethene. This has the chemical formula of C2H4, and note the double bond in the centre. Afterwards we have propene with the chemical formula C3H6, and here is our displayed formula. Finally we have butene with the chemical formula of C4H8. Note that the double bond isn't always in the same place. For the purpose of the exam, you don't actually need to have the double bond anywhere in particular. It doesn't matter where you put it as long as it's between two carbons. Alkenes are more reactive than alkanes. As the alkenes get longer, similarly to the alkanes, their boiling point increases, as does their viscosity. The general chemical formula for alkenes is slightly different to that of alkanes. If you have n carbons in your alkene, you must have 2n hydrogens. For instance, if we had 10 carbons, C10, we would have H2 times 10 hydrogens, or H20. This would give us C10H20, or decene. Here's a quick comparison between the alkanes and alkenes. Remember, there is no such thing as methene. A nice way of remembering the order of the naming conventions for the alkanes is monkeys eat peeled bananas. In the case of the alkenes, the monkeys have probably died, unfortunately, so you have to eat the peeled bananas yourselves. There is a test to determine whether a substance is an alkane or an alkene, and it involves bromine water. 
Bromine water contains bromine atoms dissolved in H2O. Normally, it is a reddy brown color, as shown here. If you add an alkane to it, there is no reaction noted, and it stays a reddy brown color. This is because the alkane is a saturated molecule and there is no space for the bromine to react with it. Alkenes, on the other hand, being unsaturated and containing a double bond, can react with bromine, and the bromine breaks that double bond and attaches itself to the carbon atoms. In the process, this turns the resulting solution colourless or transparent. If you see your solution turn colourless when the bromine water is added, then it must be an alkene. Otherwise, if it stays ready brown, it is an alkane. This concludes our video on alkanes and alkenes. I'll leave you with this delightful image of a doorway to hell. This is an open surface mine somewhere in Russia where they discovered a large pocket of methane under the surface. They decided, with infinite wisdom, to set fire to it and burn it all out before they could start digging at the coal or get to the oil beneath. It's been burning now for 40 plus years and shows no signs of going out. Yay for global warming!